Right, hello everybody. Um, I've got a special guest with me today who's uh, going to be talking about um, the importance of routines in your day-to-day -day life and the benefits that you can see from that. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, Keegan. Yeah, hi mate. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my name's Keegan Hurst. I'm a former professional rugby league player. I'm now um, an online men's coach covering physical side, mental side, you know, helping guys who've been stuck for ages physically mentally not being able to get out of a rut get the results they want and what's most important is keep them um and you know i've literally coached hundreds and hundreds of guys richie being one of them so yeah lo lots of experience helping guys um get the get the heads right get the bodies right and and prime themselves to to get the best results possible right yeah happy day yeah so we had we had some quite result good results to me didn't we i'll show like a i'll show a picture at the end but um, so what I'm going to do now, mate, is I'm going to give you a hypothetical example of, um, say, maybe a student living in halls now in like in these online times where there's not much social interaction and stuff. So say, for example, the student's name's Jeff. So Jeff has lectures starting at 11 o'clock um, every day. He's getting out of bed, no set time, um, going to bed late, waking up at like, 10 to 11 straight into online lectures struggling to concentrate um and really like demotivated and stuff like that poor diet eating pot noodles and takeaway pizzas and leftovers from the fridge that he's nicking from his mates so um in terms of like routine what would you say like the detrimental effects of a routine like that can be to like mental and physical well-being yeah, uh, well, if we look at Jeff there, you know, there's a few things that stand out straight away. Um, Jeff's not having any time to himself. Um, he's, not, he's not looking after himself physically or mentally. Um, he's, he's got no structure. So when we don't have structure, we don't have any control. And whenever we don't have any control, our anxiety goes up and our confidence goes down. And we always feel like we're scrabbling from one thing to another. We don't feel productive. We always feel like we're chasing our tail. And then that's just demotivating. It's demoralizing. And, you know, when you're demotivated, demoralized, and you don't feel great, then you're going to gravitate towards shit, easy food, which in turn is going to make you feel shit and demoralized and demotivated because you're going to start putting weight on you're going to um, you know close the feeling a bit tighter it's going to impact your sleep it's going to impact your digestion um, and, and it's just a, a negative loop that keeps going and reinforcing itself so I've had loads of guys come to me who you know work 60 hour weeks who've got high pressure stuff and and don't have time to, to for themselves so and then you, you know guys on the other side of the scale like students who've got for too much time and then everything's just made up so with routine you what we all want in life now however old we are whether you're a little toddler or whether you're an old man or somewhere in between we all want certainty because certainty gives us that control it gives us that feeling of knowing what's coming next we're always worried about what's next what's next that's part of the human condition so if we can if we can know that then it's going to put us in a positive mental headspace and then everything else can kind of follow suit from that. So, you know, the, the impact of not having that structure or do it or making it up as you go along is that lack of certain mentally is that lack of certainty. It's that um, anxiety. It's that frustration at not being able to get done, not feeling productive. Physically, your energy is going to be down. The food choices that you make are going to be down. Your productivity is going to be down. You're going to be feeling sluggish, you know, stuff like your gut health and, you know, going to the toilet and not sleeping properly, all that kind of stuff, it's all interlinked. So what we need to do is we need somewhere where we can get into that cycle and, and break it. And routines are a really good good place to start. And, and something, something to say about routines, what everybody sees now in this social media day and age is these fitness gurus who put... Um, this is my morning routine and they wake up at four o'clock and they read a page of the Daily Stoic and then they stick an avocado up their ass and then they you know, <laughs> do whatever they do. Like that, that's not a morning routine, all right? A morning routine should be no longer than an hour. And, you know, uh, same with an evening routine, really. And the purpose of a morning routine, the sole purpose of a morning routine is to set you up for a win. It's to have some time for you before you deal with everybody else's shit. Think about when you open your phone, you open your emails, you open your coursework, that is their problems waiting to happen. So before all that happens, we want at least an hour 
where we can look after ourselves and prioritize ourselves. I call it sharpening the ax. All right. If you're going to cut down a tree, the first thing you do is sharpen the ax. All right. And that's what we do every morning. So within that, you want to make sure you have some food. You want to make sure you do something for you. For me, I do a bit of journaling, literally five, 10 minutes. I do a bit of meditating. I use an app, you know, I'm, I'm no yogi or anything. I use a Sam Harris app. Um, there's Headspace, there's Calm, there's lots of apps you can use. And then I usually go for a walk, like a 25 minute walk, just because a good night's sleep starts in the morning. Obviously it's winter now, so it's a bit more difficult. You might want to do it later in the day, but getting that vitamin D just helps your body, it helps you uh, kickstart all your hormonal functions and, and everything that's going on and it'll help what, um, what we call your circadian rhythm, which is your internal body clock. I'm just saying that to impress you. Um, so getting some vitamin D in is going to help. I, I always say a good night's sleep starts in the morning. Um, so that's all a morning routine needs to be. Please don't think that you have to read or that you have to, if you want to do something like that, that's for you, not something to do with your course or anything. You know, if you want to do something that you want to do on the side, but because you might not have time to do it for the rest of the day, whether that's going to the gym or doing a bit of learning about something or, you know, anything at all, as long as it works for you. But as soon as your morning routine starts to feel like a chore, you won't do it. So make sure it's filled with things that make you feel better and set you up for a win. An evening routine is all, the sole purpose of an evening routine is to um, fix up the quality of your sleep. So we want to be winding down. So it's things like, coming away from screens like 30 minutes before you go to bed, um, making sure that you're, you, you know, you, you're not having stuff like caffeine late on in, in the evening. You're not having fucking monsters and stuff like that just before you go to bed. Because even if you do get to sleep, the quality of your sleep is going to be shit. All right. And it's not enough to just get enough sleep. We want good quality sleep where we're going into that deep sleep where we, what we call REM sleep. Um, the things like making sure you're having a shower, making sure that you're looking after yourself, just doing relaxing shit. Um, you know, whether it's re reading a bit of um, fiction, I find works well. Um, but just try to stay off your phone because if you think like Instagram or Facebook or you see people doing stuff and it pisses you off, the last thing you want to be doing is, is being stressed before bed because you just won't sleep. So again, an evening routine, 30 minutes maybe but it certainly doesn't need to be something that's a, a massive chore I might do a bit of journaling just to get all your thoughts out your head onto a bit of paper um just so you're not having to deal with it all up here i find that so useful five minutes on the morning five minutes on an evening that's all i do um you don't have to be you know words with you just need to get it all out of your head so yeah. you can book in your day with a with a couple of routines and and you know even if the day in between is absolute dog shit you've taken control of the beginning and the end um, and that'll give you you know something good to work off for the next day yeah yeah um i just want to add like the middle the filling of the sandwich there so yeah. i've struggled a little bit sometimes with concentration if i give myself like an eight hour period where i'm just studying and just writing assignments because mm. i'll sit there and i'll do i'll do an hour like really like i'll Put some good quality work in and then you just start getting distracted and the procrastination gremlins start coming in so i think mm. one, one thing that i started doing was taking like more regular breaks away from my computer and going out and then coming back with a bit of a fresh head and there yeah. it gives you time to process some of the things that you've been working on while you're just going for a wander and and then when you come back in you can start focusing again and absolutely think, think of it as as periodizing like an athlete would do you know the only athletes who train long distance are long distance runners marathon runners because that's what they've got to do everybody else trains in fits and starts you work hard for a little bit really intense get your head down 20 25 minutes and then come up for some air have a breather rest and recuperate do something to look after yourself go for a little bit of walk eat a bit of good food get some water down here do something away from it then go back to it and go again. And you'll find that your productivity goes through the roof. And just make sure that you, while you are being productive and you are being on it, get rid of your phone, get rid of distractions. You know, the stuff you can get on your laptops isn't there so that you can't get pop-ups and messages through and you can't browse the internet and stuff. Just little things like remove those distractions. It might only be for 20 minutes, but you'd be amazed what you can do when you've got your nose down to the, to the grinding wheel. Yeah, yeah. Um, journaling as well. Um, so this is quite a key thing with your training programs, isn't it? To noting down 
what you're achieving, what target you're hitting every day. Yeah. Um, that's good to use as like, um, so if you have one for your routines, essentially, it's good to have something to reflect on. And if, if you are in, introducing a training program as well, if, as eating healthier and all that, it's good to see where you are, like taking progress photos and stuff like that, like, like yeah. we do with you. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so I'd, I'd, I'd recommend, make sure you have a to-do list, all right? Make, and make sure your to-do list is no more than three things on it, right? It's better to um, ask for less and over-deliver than ask for more and under-deliver because that's going to demoralize the fuck out of you. So make sure there's no more than three things on it and only one of them should be like a big task. Because even if you've got seven big tasks to do through the week, one a day, you know, you break it down rather than leaving it to the end. So three tasks that you've got to do for the day. Um, and then at the end of the day, you can reflect, did I do them? You know, what did it teach me? What And, and something that I always, a question that I ask myself on the morning is when I do my journal is what challenges might I face today and how will I deal with them if they pop up? Because all it does is it gives you... Um, it stops you getting into what I call a car crash mentality. Yeah. So what we don't want is when we hit a problem, we don't want to just stop like this. We want to see the problem come in, slow down, and then go around it because we don't want to lose momentum. So if you know that something might pop up, you know, you, you might have a, a lecturer who's a bit of a twat who might want you to redo something and hand it back in. If you know that and you're prepared for it and you've got a plan B, then when it happens, you know, you, you're not going to lose your shit. And you're not going to feel out of control because when something comes up and you've got that other option, suddenly you're the one who's taking control and, and you'll feel really good about that and it'll give you that uh, ability to just kind of keep motoring on. Yeah, spot on. Spot on. Right. Um, so maybe the last thing we'll talk about here is um, the hardest. I'll ask you first. What's the hardest sort of lifestyle change you had to make and how much did you have to convince yourself to make the change? Um, I don't, I don't know really. It's, it's probably when um, I don't know. Probably getting into getting into rugby, and um, get, getting into like professional rugby, and knowing that doing the bare minimum wasn't enough. There were lots of people who did the bare minimum, and you know we all like to think that we're good enough to just do the bare minimum, and we're better than other people. We, we all like to think that. I know I certainly did. Um, and then realizing that the bare minimum wasn't enough and having to go above and beyond. And by that, I don't mean doing, you know, more training necessarily, but it was doing things like looking after yourself, with, you know, making sure that your sleep was good, making sure that you were drinking enough water, little stupid shit, innocuous shit that people don't realize has a massive impact. Um, and it's just knowing that the, the more you do, the easier your life will be. Yeah, the, if you, you know, do make hard decisions, you'll have an easy life. Make easy decisions, you'll have a hard life. Um, so it, it was just kind of flipping my perspective rather than trying to do as little as possible with getting away as much as possible. It's um, like front-loading your energy and your effort. And that will always come back later on down the line. You know, if you do it with a, a dissertation or something and you, you put a big chunk of the work in early on, and then you have that ability to refine it, it'll pay off further down the line rather than trying to leave it all to the end. Yeah, it's it's like what you were saying there kind of goes a little bit into like marginal gains, doesn't it? Making like making incremental changes that all add up to a bigger sort of like performance increase essentially. Mm -hmm. and, and one of them, um, when, when I started training uh, with you, like one of my main issues was like sleep like not sleeping at all, like maybe having four or five hours of sleep a night. And I was like, well, I'm doing a bit of training. My diet's not that bad. Um, like I don't need, like my sleep's fine. But as soon as I, as soon as I got my head round, uh, actually getting that sleep in, I was so much more full of energy through the day. I could train harder. Uh, I had much more energy to do the things I wanted to do. My concentration uh, increased. Yeah, sleep, uh, sleep, is, sleep is when the magic happens. It's when, yeah. it's when we lose fat. It's when we build muscle. It's when all your hormone imbalances um, are sorted out. It's when, you know, everything's kind of reset. And that's why I said earlier, if you're not getting enough sleep or you're not getting enough quality sleep, that's not going to happen. You're always going to feel sluggish and like you're chasing your tail. Yeah, yeah. So I think just to finish off here, um, what I'm going to do is I will quickly share my screen just to show you, so 
the, the first picture on, on this now is when I started my sort of like three month course um, of coaching with Keegan and my routine, I had no routine, I had no plan for my week and like slowly Keegan beat me into the right mentality essentially and the results were, the, the results were, um, were pretty impressive so I am just going to share my screen over here. Um, can you see that over there? Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. So this side here, no routine, and this side here. This is probably the first couple of weeks. I was still a bit um, resistant to change on certain areas, and then slowly I got into it and managed to get myself into pretty good shape. So and you were uh, strong. It's not just talk. Like, like the ball, weren't you? what's that? You were still strong as a ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still strong as a ball. Because that was one of my misconceptions. I was like, I want to be really strong. So I, I need to be like a bit bulkier. But I lost like, what was it, about 13, 14 kilos, I think. And I was yeah. stronger at the end of it. So, yeah, yeah. great um, great example. Have you got any final thoughts or anything you want to you wanna add in there? Keep no, uh, I think all I would add in that I've not touched on is just set yourself three non-negotiables every day. Uh, you know, whether that's drinking enough water. So you want to be drinking like 25, uh, you want to be drinking one liter for every 25 kilos you weigh. Uh, make sure that you're drinking, you, you're, trying, you're trying to get at least five portions of fruit and veg. I know it sounds like a government thing, but I'd say, you know, if you're aiming for free by, by your second meal, obviously depending when you get up, um, you can have that boxed off and that's going to really improve your gut health and your energy. And we've already touched on sleep. Just make sure that you're getting quality sleep, stay off the caffeine in the afternoon. Um, and just look after your sleep hygiene is really important. Yeah, definitely. And I'd, I'd agree there. Like sleep is important for concentration. And when you're studying online in your like bedroom all day, essentially concentration is really, really important. Yeah. So yeah, get the sleep in. Right. Thank you very much for joining me, mate. It's been, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure, mate. Cheers. No worries, pal. All good.